And you, I did not request your help so that you could bring aliens into the Empire. Speak to me again in that tone. <gasps> <coughs> I'm sorry, my lord. Hark the herald angels sing, hold right puns on a fucking thing. So, did you hear about the latest outrage about cartoons that aren't out yet? Which one? Good question! One of the biggest tells that someone doesn't have a single smart thing to say about a show is if they pitch a shit fit about it before it even releases. The last few months have been filled with new shows being announced and nerds on the internet losing every last crumb of their shit over them. By now you're probably already aware of Teen Titans Go and the sheer amount of nonsensical outrage that has been filling YouTube about it for literally years, to the point that the Teen Titans movie came out announcing a return to the original Teen Titans, and I can see that going one of two ways. Either A, those with the roast into goggles for Teen Titans will constantly praise it regardless of content and continue stroking the Teen Titans Go hate boner by constantly bringing it up, or B, they'll see more of the show they actually watched and realize that they were throwing their loaded diapers all over YouTube for years over literally fucking nothing. But hey, Teen Titans Go's massive crybaby hate them is old news. These days, it's all about the Thundercats, She-Ra, and Crunchyroll for some fucking reason. Thundercats Roar was announced and the collective response on the internet was... Just like Teen Titans, Thundercats is one of those properties that was taken far more seriously than they should have by much of its fans at the time because we were all kids and didn't know squat. The Thundercats have always been really, really dumb, right up to needing to put the villains in gimp suits so you'd know which character you were supposed to be taken nominally seriously, and Thundercats Roar is no exception. But in this age of rose-colored glasses and a nostalgia-hungry market, even slightly hinting at the fact that all your favorite cartoons as a kid were really, really dumb is enough to set off a torrent of inconsolable bawling from the web. None of this was helped by the fact that in 2011, the Thundercats saw a new series that laughably tried to take itself seriously and became part of the then trend of cartoons going, please let us be the next Avatar. It certainly looked like the creative team had a lot of passion and cared about what they were making, but they chose the wrong property and bit off way more than they could possibly chew. Despite the avalanche of videos on the subject, all anybody could really do was whine ineffectually about the art style because it looks vaguely like Gravity Falls and Steven Universe, and dipshit animation buffs are convinced that there's some kind of conspiracy about Cal art style because when you run out of lore to smack into a wiki, the only recourse left is to either get better at doing animation criticism or just turn into fucking Alex Jones. Interestingly enough, the knee-jerk sobbing over the supposed destruction of childhood, side note, if a reboot actually can destroy your childhood, you are a pathetic sack of shit, is missing a really key fatal flaw in Thundercats Roar that they don't see because they don't remember the show they actually watched. Thundercats was already the funny version of itself and went the Kingdom Hearts route of just playing everything straight and letting the ridiculousness stand on its own merits. Unfortunately, the creators didn't and couldn't account for an entire generation generation of sad sacks spending the next two decades convincing themselves that the walking cats with thunder swords was important and meaningful storytelling. This isn't new or restricted to animation, of course. Star Trek has been the poster child for this kind of socially maladjusted outrage for a very long time. Voyager was long seen as the black sheep of the franchise, despite it having more in common with the original Star Trek than Next Generation or Deep Space Nine ever did, but those two shows are superficially intellectual and as such going back to its roots in Voyager and boldly going where literally nobody had gone before was seen as stupid and childish, but ironically it happened a second second time when Star Trek Discovery was announced, and a whole bunch of Star Trek fans decried it for the usual political correctness and social justice agenda, and white genocide in space. Yeah, you heard that, there are apparently alt-right Star Trek fans, despite the fact that Star Trek has always been extremely and unapologetically leftist for its entire runtime. Hell, capitalism is practically dead in the Federation for fuck's sake, and nobody likes the Ferengi. Many of these people, angry that Star Trek Discovery had betrayed them for maintaining the exact same tone and themes the series had from the beginning, jumped ship to The Orville. The Orville was a similar series based more around comedy created by and starring Seth MacFarlane, and all these angry man babies started championing it as the true successor to Star Trek. Then the third episode, yes, the third episode, 
came out that dealt directly with trans issues and came down very much in support of trans people, and then all those same man children started screaming about how Seth MacFarlane had betrayed them. This one in particular was doubly funny because they made the same mistake twice in a row and failed to recognize that something they were idolizing had been very unapologetically progressive for years. To the people who were surprised that Seth MacFarlane is pro-trans, I have to ask, where the fuck have you been? This has been MacFarlane's default for his entire fucking career, you stupid fucking- Unfortunately, the people who are simply too stupid to grasp what their favorite shows are actually about is just the tip of the iceberg. It isn't just Star Trek Discovery and Thundercats Roar throwing the internet into a feeding frenzy. Just very recently, there have been two outrages over the reboot of She-Ra and an original series from Crunchyroll that have far less hilarious origins. She-Ra and the Princesses of Power is set to come out in mid-November on Netflix, and its announcement set the internet ablaze for one reason. She-Ra doesn't have cleavage. No, seriously. She-Ra in the 80s was basically 80s glam made manifest and looked like an anime rendition of a Norse Valkyrie. In the reboot, She-Ra is considerably younger and the designers have ditched the strapless top for an actual chest plate, and like any well-designed chest plate, it doesn't display a person's breast because it's made of metal and breasts are made of squishy tissue. Fans, and I use the term extremely loosely here, of the old She-Ra were livid that one of their 90 billion pieces of wank fodder had been made considerably less sexy and pitched a shit fit about it on Twitter, claiming that the new She-Ra looked like a boy, that the creators were being selfish, and a few trying to spin it as the concept artist hating femininity and trying to at least pretend it was about anything other than losing masturbation fuel. What the aging man children either don't grasp or don't care about is that the new She-Ra is aimed at children and teenagers, not older fans, and this seems to be something that a lot of older fans of old cartoons don't quite grasp. Reboots of old properties aren't being made for you, they're being made for children today. DVD releases are made for you, so the concerns of adult fans don't reach their ears and they really shouldn't because they're often extremely small in number when compared to a potential real demographic. This selfish entitlement is found in nearly every adult cartoon fandom. Of the YouTubers who analyze friendship as magic, it seems I'm the only one concerned about the well-being and entertainment value of the primary demographic. Children. It's why episodes lambasted as filler don't bother me. It's why horrible lessons do bother me. It's why I keep imploring the creators to stick to being entertaining rather than lazily chasing world building for brony praise. It's the offshoot of the animation needs to be more mature. Whinging. We're insecure your adults want shows to cater to them and only to them and fuck everybody else. Lastly, we come to High Guardian Spice, an original series from Crunchyroll whose initial announcement trailer showed some storyboards and the creators talking about how proud they are of their diverse show crew. Nothing really positive or negative about it, just some concepts and an admission that their staff meets a bare minimum standard of professionalism. But that didn't stop the tears! You see, if Western cartoon fandom has a man-child problem, Japanese cartoons are almost entirely surviving off their man-child problem. And this announcement was met with a torrent of sobbing and whining from people who think Crunchyroll is breaking their promise that the subscription fee is going to support the anime industry and tacitly ignoring that Crunchyroll has investors, sponsorships, and a parent company that they get additional funding from. They also fail to grasp that an original series that doesn't carry the stink of most Japanese cartoons will likely bring in new subscribers and thus provide more funding to keep shoveling more crappy softcore porn into the weebs' faces. There's a handful of other complaints, but they all come back to the same thing. People are angry that Crunchyroll is making an original series, and if these videos are anything to go by, they wouldn't be anywhere near as furious that the creators hadn't mentioned the dreaded D and R words, and oh my god, someone has short pink hair! I'm not exactly why the cyber Nazis hate women with short, brightly colored hair, but it's probably for stupid reasons. The nadir of this whole shit show is Digibro, a former MLP YouTuber turned creepy anime cave dweller, who was last seen expressing disappointment that Patreon banned incest, bestiality, and child pornography. Digibro was a verbose and empty-headed dipshit back when he was doing MLP videos, and that hasn't changed. He's just switched to a medium with a considerably lower barrier to entry and a higher tolerance for stupid bullshit. Digibro has derided High Guardian Spice as Tumblr the anime, which is especially telling that it's entirely due to the creator saying the word diversity in their announcement that set him off, and all the other complaints are fished out of a hat to sound less reactionary than it actually is. I don't buy the excuse that they're just upset that it's not a genuine Japanese cartoon, because most of these deranged fuckers like Ruby, and that's made by Americans as well. And Ruby is even on Crunchyroll. You're not fooling anyone, you stupid sacks of shit. You see, unlike Thundercat's Roar, High Guardian Spice was just announced with no other material. It's impossible to know what the quality of the show is going to be, or what the content is going to be. But to the knee-jerk crybabies who make up something like 90% of the fans of Japanese cartoons, they just heard the word diversity and just got sent into a torrent of absolutely inconsolable bawling. Similarly to how it was rumored that G5 of My Little Pony would have Applejack voiced by a black voice actress and Equestria Daily had a fucking meltdown about it, or when Hasbro posted a Pride tweet on the very last day of Pride Month and they had yet another meltdown about it. 
Rip the sheet off and you'll see what's actually underneath. A bunch of conservative troglodytes losing their shit over the possibility that a cartoon is going to be progressive based on literally fucking nothing. A diverse crew is not a guarantee of quality. Steven Universe has a diverse crew and half its runtime is spent begging the viewer to feel sorry for the genocidal space fascists. These are people who willingly work for Crunchyroll, so there's a good chance that they have the same standards for quality as much of the fandom for Japanese cartoons has. Fucking none. But even if High Guardian Spice did turn out to be super progressive, that wouldn't justify the pathetic shrieking of these sad sacks of shit because their thin-skinned tantrums about the increasing visibility of women, minorities, and LGBT is an obsolete value and they need to fuck off from civilized society forever. You know, more than they already have done. The fact that they're so fucking angry about this is a good thing because fuck those assholes with a wire brush. Ow. Every time a new animated series is released nowadays, it's the same shitstorm, and in Crunchyroll's case, a lot of people are calling it SJW unironically because of the writing team, which tells me more about the person criticizing the show than it does the show itself. Despite my insulting jab a minute ago, most of the staff has a very wide pedigree with Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Rugrats, The Simpsons, Animaniacs, Adventure Time, and Equestria Girl in their writers' resumes, but it seems like the man-child crowd saw some pink hair in the dreaded D-word and lost every last crumb of their shit. And this, along with Thundercats and She-Ra, is nothing more than a preemptive cry baby tantrum based on literally fucking nothing. If you think you have legitimate criticisms of these shows, shut the fuck up. You don't. None of these shows have aired yet, and you're an idiot if you think you could predict what's going to happen in it. You don't have enough information to have an informed opinion on them. You're just another conservative snowflake. Grow a thicker skin and quit being so fucking sensitive.